and welcome to this episode of Feline Opinionated, where myself, Sophie, and my friend Susie are going to be talking about Percy Jackson and the Olympians, currently airing on Disney+, Plus, and how they relate to the book series of Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief uh, by Rick Riordan, or as most of us know him, Uncle Rick. Because we're talking about the episodes in relations to the books and where the series will go, this will feature many, many spoilers, so if you want to avoid spoilers such as who the traitor is and what the prophecies are going to be, uh, which characters are going to come into the series, then please don't listen to this. Uh, we just want to talk about it from our experiences and our opinions reading the books over the years and what we already know is going to come. Uh, so, yes, I I hope that those of you have decided to stay enjoyed the show and... Unfortunately, some of this is edited together pretty badly. This is our first podcast. This is mostly for fun. And uh, yeah, we, we've never done this before and I'm no whiz at editing. So in the meantime, have fun and welcome to episodes one and two of Percy Jackson and the Olympians. Uh, I'll start with episode one of it, you know, just Percy Jackson. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, okay, so uh, Percy Jackson, just as a general subject, I'm sorry, Peter Johnson and the Olympians, and yep. we're going to be talking about it, non, uh, it's got spoilers, we're going to talk about spoilers, because we've read the books, and we we know what's coming in the shows, so yeah, yeah. get out of here now if you don't want that done. No, yeah, prophecies from Apollo. Yeah. Uh, which is fine, Suze, because you're a child of Apollo, so you're okay. You know, you've got the prophecies down. Apparently. I'm, yeah, I'm like a child of Hephaestus, which means you should leave me in my workshop like a little hunchback saddle. <laughs> you know? Yes, yes. I can't, wait. I can't wait to see him. I'm so excited. It's like my big thing is going to be seeing Hephaestus because I'm going to be such a nerd about that. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Let's just start off with, I think we've got like a fucking banging cast already swearing. I'm so (laughs) sorry. (laughs) We're British. It's going to happen. Yeah. We've got like a really good cast though, right? Like, like, oh God, I love the trio together. I love like Walker, Leon, uh, Iron. Yeah, Iron is together. Oh, they're so cute. (laughs) Oh, shit. My cat's (laughs) crying. leave that in because it's kind of funny as hell (laughs) (laughs) oh dear uh anyway yeah so like we've got a really great uh trio i i just think it's a really good cast overall but i think it's really funny that that percy looks like that now because we're gonna have that whole thing later on with nico where he's like percy tall like dark and has it's just not my type and then he looks over at will solace who's just curly blonde halo of hair yeah. and he's got like the chicken shirt and i'm like he's your type now nico <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your type. yeah um okay so the opening it has like all the uniform changes like to show that they're going through like school like he's going through different schools and stuff and i really like that because they didn't actually mention that he's been kicked out of like uh, 17 schools by this point. Yeah, yeah, I actually never noticed that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, like, so when you see him when he's young, he's got, like, a different uniform. I mean, you could just go, oh, he's a younger kid. But no, it's, like, he's actually changing uniforms, like, a bit through the montage. I I was, like, really interested in that. I was like, ooh, you haven't mentioned he's out of the schools, but yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I think that's one of the overall things that the show has done really well so far. Obviously, there's only been four episodes, um but um I think overall they've done a really good job of explaining stuff without having to actually explain it yeah like they put it like in the background and okay for people who haven't read the books maybe that's not as like easy to follow maybe they're getting slightly confused over some stuff but I think um I'm trying to think of an example um the uh, like you just said, like the school uh, uniforms changing. Um, 
I also think that, um, oh, Jesus, uh, having Lynn Wamal Miranda in the third episode, your husband. My husband? <laughs> <laughs> I um, stopped everything. I was like, he's singing. Everyone. <laughs> Stop. And the mum was like, you okay? Because she's, I've been forcing her to watch this with me. And she has no idea what the fuck's going on. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But I'm like, everyone shut up. Lin-Manuel Miranda is on screen. <laughs> uh, I rewatched that bit again last night. Like, I rewatched the episodes again last night. And he just, at the end, he's like, guys, you're not going to believe this. Because he takes the post box in. Yeah. And I'm like, Ooh, what in there? Oh, God. Sure. Sure. Yeah. But yeah, test or anything. <laughs> but I think that was a really like. I mean, again, I I've I've seen a couple of other reviews that are just like, well, they've got to get their money's worth if they got Lin Manuel Miranda in it. They're gonna have to have him in there somewhere. Can and I'm like, yeah, that that is that is fair. Yeah, you, you do have to get your money's worth. Um, but it was also pointed out um that uh I can't even remember who said it now. I will remember at some point, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, that uh, um, it was a nice way of doing, uh, like explaining that Olympus is at the top of the Empire State Building instead of having this, like, you know, <laughs> big like, massive explanation about the whole, you know, God thing, which I'm sure we'll get at some power. point. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure we will get that at some point. Like, I'm sure Zeus will monologue at some point because it's Zeus. Uh, be Annabeth, I think it'll be the end where they go, well, how are we going to, I think Percival will go, well, how are we going to get to Olympus now? That's in Greece. And she's like, actually. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe, yeah. He's going to go, what? why is it there? Hmm? Socioeconomic power. And he's just like, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I guess. Uh, I love that. Like, because we were talking about the school uniforms a minute ago, that the the outfits, the costuming is just uh, like almost every costume description has been lifted from the books, except when there isn't a book costume to go from. Like Mr. D's tiger shirt, yeah. because the sacred animal is uh, his tigers, yeah. um, based on his India run, <laughs> India speed run, how to fail it. Yeah, like. Um, Rick was uh, like they were doing some costumes and he was just so happy to see that his costumes have been like directly lifted from the book this time because in the film which is mostly failures let's be honest yes. the film's not great yeah oh good uh no offense to the actors I love the actors I do they, they were cuties they were absolutely cuties. yeah no not not the acting fault it's, it's the, the writing and writing <laughs> uh but like like in that one uh uncle rings all the costumes he's like why are they in greek armor all the time and they're like because they're greek gods and he's like yes but they have to fit in with society and that's kind of their thing that they take from it and give to it which yeah. is why like uh poseidon always has like the the hawaiian shirts and zeus's pinstripe suits because he views that as the source of like a good looking man in power. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. And so this time they're actually doing that. And I'm just like, oh, thank God. I, yeah. can't, I can't tell you how much I want a camp half blood shirt. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah. I, I really, really want one. Yeah. That's one of the things I'm excited about this show for as well, because I hope that, um, that, hang on a minute. Uh-huh. Yep. Picking up some background noise there, friend. Oh. Um, yeah, I, uh, I hope that we get, like, some, like, quite decent merchandise from, oh, yeah. from this show. Uh, so, yeah, I'm very excited. I'm so entirely on Camp half side, and eventually Camp Jupiter is going to be a thing, and I'm like, you, 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 you come over here with my favourite colour, purple, and you dare <laughs> have a Roman suit. I will wear the orange for this, and I never <laughs> wear orange. Do Camp Apple. I have no issue against Camp uh, Camp Jupiter, but I'm just like Camp Apple all the way, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> Sliding up to the side. Um, uh, I like you know what else I like the little like the little the tiniest details like yeah, episode when we have the myth of magic cards and I'm like oh Percy you just wait till Nico gets here this is his favorite game. <laughs> And the foreshadowing, 
I don't know if you've ever seen it, like the foreshadowing, like it starts off with Percy just drawing in his notebook and he's he's got like the Cyclops there for Tyson and he's got like the Harpies in there. And, like, there's a bunch of stuff that's just going to happen in his notebook. Yeah. Uh, and they also did the same thing in the end credits. Um, yeah. Love the end credits. Oh, the end credits are beautiful. My God, you know what? I, I do. I absolutely adore those. Again, Hephaestus is my favourite there because we're seeing already that he has a hunchback, but he has the welding goggles. I'm like, this is my boy! <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I love the end credits. I love the Art Nouveau style to match with the Empire State Building. You just watch. I don't know like much about art, but someone's going to come on the comments and be like, that's French Wococo, you dweeb. <laughs> And I'm like, yes, but it matches the Empire State Building. And they're like, yes, but you know nothing about art. And I'm like, I hope I've said the right thing with Art Nouveau. <laughs> Just... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get called out because we <laughs> have nothing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going to like miss a detail. What about this? You didn't mention this. I I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think my overall thoughts on it are, like, again, the four episodes that we've had are... The the fourth and the third are probably my favourites at the oh, minute. God, definitely. I, um, I really like one and two, but yeah. I rushed through a few things. I would have liked another episode in between us just at Camp Half-Blood. Mm. It doesn't yeah. even have the exposition just at Camp Half-Blood. Yeah, I, I think... Um, yeah, the first episode was really, really good. I love uh, the casting uh, for, per- uh, for uh, Percy's mom. Mm, yeah, Sally. Oh my god. Wonderful. Sally Jackson. They got her perfectly. I wasn't initially happy with what they did with um his Smelly stepdad, Gabe. whose name I can't remember. Yeah, Gabe, Gabe Ugliano, that's it. Yeah, Smelly Gabe. Yeah, I I I wasn't initially happy with what, what they did with that, but I don't mind the change now that I've had a bit of time to process it because I'm like, well, in the books, it's very, very pretty much confirmed that she is in a domestic abuse relationship. Yeah. Um, But they don't want to show that on Disney+. Plus. Oh. I don't know. I, I understand why they made the change about Gabe. I do. I fully mm. understand that it's, it's more palatable. And that mental abuse grinds you down just as much I understand that that is still a very big type of abuse it's massive it's it's horrible and it happens all the time and in fact if anything like physical abuse is really common but mental abuse is more common and usually the like the start to physical abuse like you grind someone down like that Mm. but I think having him be a physical abuser and having Sally although I love that Sally's like not taking anything in the show she's like no I'm gonna eat your sandwich and get out of here you know yeah. Uh, uh, or I can bring you one and you can ask nicely. But in the book, she has to simper down with him so much. Like, no, I'll make you your, your seven layer dip and you can have your polka buddies over here and, and you can have the place. Yeah. I like that better in the sense that it means she sacrificed so much more for Percy. Yeah. I'm not saying that she hasn't like sacrificed for him in this. She obviously has. I just think it downplays it a little bit. But mm. it doesn't mean I hate it. It just means that I prefer the source material for that part. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I do prefer that. But I think if it's a change that Rick was comfortable with, and obviously, you know, good old Uncle Rick has, you know, he's had a lot of, of it. And, yeah, he's, he's, he's got a lot of control in the show, which, you know, it was the biggest mistake that the movie's ever made. Um, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, so, you know, if he's happy with the change, then, you know, I'm happy with the change. Um, But, yeah, that was my biggest issue with the first episode, that I didn't like what they did with Gabe. Well, I rewatched it last night, like I said, and because last night was the first time I've watched it, and I've watched every episode as they've come out. Watching them all together, now that I'm used to the idea, you're right, it's just like, oh, you just had to accept this change and be okay with it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's cool. I say, yeah, okay, I'm I'm always going to prefer the book for that bit, but I don't mind. I'm just like, you're right. Yeah, no. What you're thinking is right. Yeah, it's like, I've loved all the episodes so far that Mm -hmm. I feel like if I just talk about what I really, really liked about it, it's going to be like, oh, no, no, this is the best show in the world. So I'm kind of like... 
yeah, I'm trying to like nitpick, if you will, like certain bits that are just like, okay, well, I don't love that. Yeah, um, like, like I don't love the pacing in one and two because, like, I I just think episode two is a bit rushed overall. I think that's the most. I think so. Episode. Yeah. 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 Uh, they, you I, know, they did they did fix some errors with uh, like a sort of continuity error, not a continuity error, just something that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> Um, so in the books, Grover has his crutches and fake shoes, uh-huh. much like Chiron has his wheelchair. Uh, and Chiron is supposed to make sense that he kept the wheelchair, because if you don't, he's still going to be like a seven foot tall human and people are going to be like, man, that's weird. And he's yeah. always carrying boxes behind him. Who does that? <laughs> it's like, he's always just pulling a cart along. So they kept his wheelchair. But Grover, like, the mist would cover his goat legs, even for Percy, like, because Percy doesn't see through it yet. And yeah. so instead of just dropped the crutches and, like, the fake shoes and just went, no, you know, no one just, just no one notices. Uh, and I'm like, well, that makes sense, because it, it is the mist. It does yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Like, why wouldn't it cover up his goat legs? <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um. You, you know, I would have loved to see in episode one, and they didn't do it, and it makes me really sad. Uh, Percy, when he's, like, leaving boarding school, like, Grover in the books makes him wait for it. I mean, granted, a few months happens between this because he doesn't get kicked out straight away. But, again, that was a plot error because once you've been discovered by a monster, why would they wait for you? That makes sense that they dropped that. I fully understand that. But... It's like when Percy is going home, he sees the free fates and that's Yeah. Yeah, and they cut the string in front of him, which is always a sign of doom. And and Grover he is this and is like, Oh, oh no, we've got to fix this immediately, which is what spawns him to go to Sally's and get him to camp after. Yeah. And I was like, I really wish to kept the free fates in there. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure like that's the one thing that I'm kind of like, I really need to reread the book. Yeah, um, I, I reread it before. Yeah. So that I remember the order of things because I'm watching it and I'm just like, I don't remember that happening then. I thought that happened later and so, stuff like that. But I think they've they've changed the order of some things so that yes. it fits better to to maybe like a newer audience. Yeah, that ma- again, that makes sense because someone did point out again, I can't remember who, and I'm sorry to some original TikTok creator up there. I really feel bad. I don't remember who. I've been scrolling for TikTok. Uh, that they went, well, yeah, why would, why would, like, if Hades has sent the Furies, why would he go, ah, well, the Fury failed. Let's just let Percy finish boarding school. I am his uncle, after all. Like, he's not going to do that. He's going to be like, nah, we'll send the next guy. <laughs> Yeah. And so one fury, let's let's send uh to Tiffany or Megara. Uh, because Elector is the fury that they sent after Percy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, okay, I've been watching this with mom. I absolutely love my mom's reaction to Sally's death. Uh <laughs> like, what's that? She was like, Yeah, look, he's gonna rescue oh look, she's gonna get to the border outside. The border doesn't let people in. Sally! And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine she's like oh it's fine you're saying it's fine she's gonna get through safely it's fine and then she sees the minotaur like crush so like, it's just like Sally and I'm just like mom it's fine and she's like oh my god oh no he can't go back to Gabe he's off and now Poseidon's not gonna come down is he because she didn't know Poseidon was his dad as much as she knows <laughs> she's seen the film but she doesn't remember like any of it because she thought when it came out yeah <laughs> Which was an impressingly long time ago. It's so funny to watch her watch it. Like, the second episode where they re- reveal that Sally's actually alive, she's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> a poor kid. And I'm like, Mom, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Just, I think that pretty much wraps up the first two. The one. And yeah. I, oh god, I do love that bit though, that what, like two bits, just one where it is like, you know, and I, I met a god, you fell in love with god, not god, a god, and he's, <laughs> for a second there he's like, oh gosh, I'm not the son of Jesus Christ superstar, <laughs> <It's fair. laughs> yeah. I was, like they're driving away from the Minotaur, and like, there's like anything else, and Groves is like, like, I'm 24, and yeah, <laughs> I love look that look bit. on Percy's face, just, what? the hell are you talking about <laughs> yeah uh, oh god so yeah that. basically
obviously we've got half an hour so we can continue with episode two now if you want or yeah sure yeah what about yeah probably got a little bit uh okay i got i got to talk about uh jason montzukas i think i'm saying his name right he plays mr d yes he's the perfect casting choice he is yeah as soon as they announced it as soon as they announced it i was like Thingy from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, that guy? Brooklyn Nine-Nine? And I was like, yeah, he's perfect. Yeah. I never yeah. doubted him for a second. I was like, yeah, if you've got uh, Pimento from Brooklyn Nine-Nine as Mr. D, this is perfect. And he is perfect. It's such an opposite scale from Pimento. Mm-hmm. It just fits. He just it has... Fits. Yeah, it really does. It fits so well. He's just... He does the, um... That kind of lazing about, I don't care about you, but also, oh, now you've challenged me, then I'm going to, like, yeah. absolutely throw down. Yeah, without having to actually really do anything. He just has the tone of voice and the look for it, doesn't he? He does, yeah. And his just, like, his just mannerisms when oh. he's playing Mr. D is just, oh, they're just spot on. They're exactly how I pictured him acting Uh, and I love that like the first thing he does is just you know obviously try and trick Percy into going to get him some wine so he can actually drink wine (laughs) I think you can help me and he's like maybe I can son (laughs) I just love Chiron coming in because Grover obviously doesn't know it's not Mr. D's child so Grover's like oh well that resolved very quickly (laughs) (laughs) like like, Chiron just comes in and he's like he's not your son he could be yes he could be but is he no (laughs) (laughs) that is my favorite scene so far I laughed so hard at that (laughs) I love it as well because uh it's so interesting to watch people who've never read the books watch the show. I'm not just talking about my mom. I'm talking about people I know just watching the show. And someone was like, oh, Diet Coke, product placement. And I was like, oh, usually I'd agree because I've been trained to the eye of product placement. Like, you watch The Walking Dead, it's Kia. They have the car. It's always miraculously clean. You watch, like, Transformers, it's everything you see. Jesus Christ, Michael Bray couldn't take, could not take a break on those films. Okay. Just, yeah, yeah. But, like, in this one, it's like Diet Coke. And I'm like, it's not product placement. That's what he drinks. It's a whole thing because he can't have this <laughs> this is, oh god there's a bit i'm waiting for you to get to in the books this is not a big spoiler otherwise i wouldn't say it here all right uh like yes this is not because like, you're reading the trials of apollo now yeah uh, it's in the final trials of apollo but there's just a bit with mr d and he's just like re- like heard a report from one of the apollo kids who want like the other kids to be healthier that like diet coke breaks up your body and he's like shut up this is my only joy (laughs) dare get this drink banned on site and he's just so grumpy about it like this is my drink (laughs) i just love him i love him so much he's the best casting yeah Uh, I, i think episode two as much as i did like it there are some bits that I'm just like, yes, that is perfect. Like, you've got the characterizations down perfectly. Like, the, every scene that Mr. D is in is just, oh, really good. Um, I do like Chiron. I like that he's not... Uh, I thought he was just going to instantly be like, oh, yeah, father figure. But he's not. He's like he is in the books. He's like, you know, he's a mentor. Yeah, he's uh, for everyone in camp, but he's not just yeah. Percy. yeah. Um, and the, the bit where they're, um, where where Percy is just, like, pissing about, basically, sometimes quite literally, when he's waiting for the battle and whatever (laughs) animated plan is, that, that is Percy Jackson, they got his, they got his, like, you know, ADHD-ness down Down. really well in that scene. I know a couple of people had a problem with the, like, the fact that he's actually, like, flossing, like, the dance. Oh, no, that's so funny, though. He's born. He's a a 12-year-old kid. Yeah. What's he gonna do? And he's been told just to win capture the flag without doing anything. Annabeth's just left him. I love that bit with Annabeth where he falls over and he's just like, 
well, thank you. Yeah, I'm fine. Thanks. <laughs> and she's just like watching him and he's like, I've got to win this. And she's just like, I don't care. It's, you're just here. I'm watching you to watch you. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you, you know what I really loved? Uh, that little montage in Camp Half-Blood where Percy's trying to figure out what he's good at and the archery just goes, yeah. he's just, he's done. And he's like, should I try again? No. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> And then they like sets her Festus cabin on like not the cabin like the workshop on fire. It's just like all these things. But my favorite bit is the end of that montage where he's like, "Is there a god of disappointment?" And Luke's about to comfort him. He's got his mouth open. He's like gonna be like, "Hey, buddy!" And so the guy next to Luke is like, "Yeah, Oasis, but she's more a goddess of failure." And Luke just like kind of like side eyes this man like, "Hey." I- we were about to comfort this child and he just ignores the dude and just goes back to Percy. He's like, hey, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. But no, I, I do think there was a pacing issue in season, in episode two. Oh, God. No. Um, I, I feel like I could have either had the episode be longer so that you get more time spent in Camp Half-Blood or another episode in Camp Half-Blood. Like, I feel like we yeah. needed that to get... I mean, maybe we'll get it at the end. Like, maybe, again, like I said, they've changed orders of some yeah, things that happen in the book. I really so, want them to do, like, the whole, like, campfire thing. And, like, ev- like you know, showing them around Camp Half-Blood. And there's this whole thing with Person in the Books where it's like, essentially, this is an amazing place, but everyone expects me just to be okay with the loss of my mom because everyone's used to tragedy. Yeah. And, and like, they didn't do that. I, I think they did They did a lot well, but I, ju- yeah, I agree. More time in Camp Half-Blood. Just half an episode more or something. But I think yeah. they really want to just get into the quest. And I'm like, right. But yeah. someone did it. Uh, someone showed me it on, uh, elsewhere. And they, like, highlighted the chapters that are the episode titles for the, for the you know. Yes, I like uh, that they've done that, yeah. And... There's, like, the first one is just the first one. Then, like, it skips, like, four chapters and you get in a half, Camp Half-Blood. Then it skips, like, another five chapters, uh, three to five chapters in Camp Half-Blood, which is what you would have spent there, and goes to the quest. Yeah. And, then, and then after that, they're pretty much more, like, one, maybe two chapters skipped a bit, like, close together, like, to match. Mm. But I'm like, oh, but just skipping that amount of time in Camp Half-Blood, I know that not all of it is as important but I really like that. Yeah, I think I think that is one of the issues in general, not just with like Percy Jackson, but with putting books into a different media. Like yeah. you don't have enough time to oh, other and like TV studios won't give you enough time. A yeah. Lot of, yeah. Yeah. But I think genuinely, like, a lot of people, like I know not all people, but a lot of people will not sit through a longer film they just won't do it because uh, just because of the time yeah like, i know this is completely off topic but you know, when when grace found out that the new batman film was mm-hmm. like three hours long she was like oh well i'm not watching it she wanted to watch it until she found out how long it was right but i watch like all these black and white films and they are slow man they are slow films all right you watch the like original dracula and it's like how long till this dude like does some dracula ring and it's just like but i love that because i don't have problems with that kind of piercing i just sort of set my mind to something else so i put like something in my hands like some sewing or whatever and then i'm like yes i can sit and watch and you're right i think that a lot of it is that we as a society have been trained to not have patience we want the immediate payoff yeah 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 um, and like i said like it's not all people because i love it as well like i've sat and watched all three Lord of the Rings films in one day because I'm a queen. Uh- <laughs> and we worship you for that. We respect yeah. you. I, I, I once tried to do that. Not like, I didn't fail. No, I went on, it was on Netflix. And I was like, this is not the extended edition. Yeah. Why would I sit through this drivel if there is yeah. not a scene of, of Aragorn eating soup and disliking it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I, I feel like maybe they're just gonna change something like maybe at the end they'll have more time in Camp Half-Blood because in the book he does go back to Camp Half-Blood for a while so yeah. maybe they'll have more of it there and like I really just want to see him and Luke bond oh god yeah like because you don't really get 
any of that. And I feel like that's what they're trying to do at the minute. They're trying to like throw a curveball <clears throat> for for people who have also like read the books. Yeah. Uh, so, Luke, yeah. Luke's played by Charlie Bushnell, and he's doing great. I love in interviews how he's gaslighting the new audience. Yeah. <laughs> he did an interview and they were like oh what do you think of Luke then and he's like I think he'll be a great mentor for Percy in the later series and then this new viewer's like yeah he will be <laughs> and we're just back to like oh no yeah gaslighting the audience yeah definitely that's so funny I love him mm-hmm. uh he's got great facial expressions yeah he does I wonder, because when we've seen him, he's been describing Annabeth as a little sister, much as he does in the books. Uh, but in those scenes, Annabeth is usually somewhere nearby, like, fawning over him a bit, like, blushing, she's been near and she kind of loves him. I wonder whether they're going to drop that due to the age gap. I mean, it's, it's not entirely uncommon for little kids to kind of like get crushes over like teenagers it happens all the time um but like so far I like I haven't seen any of it but again that could just because we haven't seen a scene wherein Annabeth and Luke are interacting past capture the flag and and then she's like I'm gonna kill some bitches full power mode yeah Uh, so I I really do wonder about that yeah I mean I don't Again, if that's a change that they're going to make because of the age gap and all of that, like, I don't think that's really necessary to the plot. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind. I just wonder whether it's going to be there. Yeah. Or whether she'll more mourn him, mourn the loss of him as a brother figure rather than a yeah. figure. Uh, which could still be potentially devastating. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Definitely. You know but what? yeah, no, I, f- I feel like episode two was the weakest, even though it had some really good points. You know what scene I really did like in it, though? Go on. When they're doing the burnt offerings to the gods and they show Percy afterwards and he's not over the big massive fire and he burns what values more since the blue suite and he prays to his mum. Yeah. I was, I was a nurse. <laughs> and that makes so much sense for Percy. Yeah, it's like it's, it's it's like it doesn't have the grand pomposity of this big fire in the in the like pavilion. Mm. It's this little tin can and just everything about that scene. Yeah, I loved, I loved. it was it was very good. I think Walker has done a really really good job of like being Percy in general. Like I think he's got his characterization down perfectly. Like he's funny. He's like. A bit of a fucking savage when it comes to his humour, like good god yeah. man. Just like he is in the books. Like Percy takes absolutely no prisoners with his humour <laughs> and it's hilarious. That's why we love him. But he's I was I was worried that he wouldn't like as um just as a generalization of like child actors, a lot of them don't have the emotional range depth. Yeah. That, like characters like not necessarily specifically like Percy but like kids do you know show emotion uh but it's really difficult I feel like to get a child actor to show yeah yeah and I think Walker has done perfect so far with the emotional stuff I mean I know your feelings towards child actors I've heard your uh insults about Annie (laughs) You they all look at the camera, man. The camera, god damn it. Look <laughs> at them. Look at them. Look at them staring into my face. They shouldn't know where I am. And he's just like really aggro about me. Like, they're, they're just children having fun, Susie. Well, they shouldn't be. <laughs> they can have fun elsewhere. Yeah, they are working. <laughs> You're the Miss Hannigan of the film adaptation world. <laughs> You just let a bitch slap a kid. You look in the other direction. Look at the character that's acting. Don't look at me. Look at them. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you want to see a child cry, you've got to do it yourself with a hand yep. fist. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. Miss Hannigan had no what, knew what's going on. Yeah, she did. She was there for it, man. You know, you know who's great? Uh, this is like the final character I can bring up in episode two, but I feel like it would be an injustice not to mention her. Uh, DR, who plays Clarice. Yeah. 
because I don't know whether you saw the interview, but there's this bit and uh, Walker was saying it was the hardest scene they filmed because it was the bit on the beach where he's fighting all three of the Aries kids, including Clarice. Uh, I, and he said that was the hardest because they've only got to react to him, but he's got to react to three sets of fighting. And also it was a pebble beach, so he kept tripping over himself and, yeah, you know, like, so he said that was the hardest bit to film. But then, like, he breaks uh, Clarice's spear, the, the gift from her father, and she does that rage scream, but it was so loud that he was like, oh, my God, I've actually upset her. And he, like, got genuinely scared of her. Like, and so his reaction is entirely real because she screamed so much louder than he was expecting. Yeah. <laughs> he was just like really freaking out and it's not it's just Dior's this fantastic young actress yeah yeah no I think yeah I think all of the the cast have done really well so far yeah. um I know that in the next not next episode like in this series uh somewhere it was mentioned uh in one of the interviews that they're planning to look into Clarice's uh, thing as like trying to be Aerie's favourite child, despite the fact that she's a girl. Because that's a whole plot in the Demigod Diaries, which I know you haven't read. Mm. That she has to compete with his actual godly children, Phobos and Deimos, is it? Yeah, uh, Fear and Darkness. Um, over being his like like being one of his like best children, best human children. And it's the fact that they've never let a girl drive drive his chariot yeah and she's like well I'm going to and they're just trying to mess her up the entire way and screw it up for her because it's their godly parent and their gods and you're not and you're a girl and I really I'm really looking forward to that yeah I I hope that yeah I hope that we get some uh some just good other um like not main character backstory yeah yeah, but like, yeah, I, you're right. I don't want to like praise, like overpraise the show. I'm excited about it. That's the thing. But there are, uh, in episode two was, I think episode one was the weakest, but episode two has the worst pacing. Okay, fair enough. I I would agree with the pacing, but I think the the um, it's just the relationship between Sally and Percy. Oh, which that, makes that episode. first episode does it so good it. like they explain so much of their relationship and their dynamic at least uh, but again this it, it's difficult because it could be from a thing of because I already know the bond that they share because I've read the books mm-hmm. so I I instantly connected with that bond you're drawn to that yeah well I don't know because I feel like Grace got it as well um so yeah although she was <laughs> She was very much, uh, because she's not read the books, she was very much like, oh, but it's exactly the same as the film. I don't know what you guys were complaining about. And I'm like, no, 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 just wait, just wait. And then we got to episode three and uh, she was just like, oh. Oh, yeah, there's the oh, yeah, yeah, it's very different. It's nothing like the film now, is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know, absolutely. Yeah. God, there's so much I just am on over it. But I, I, you're more drawn to the maternal bond, and I totally get that. I adore that. I'm more drawn to the mythology of Camp Half Blood, the relationships there, the way the demigods all work together or against each other. Oh God, I need to see the Stall Twins. I need. Oh, I know, right? The Stall Twins. I was, I need them. That was one of the reasons why I, I was just like, but I want more Camp Half, Camp Half Blood so that we can meet all of these background characters. Oh, I know Connor and Travis are two of my favorite characters in the belly. <laughs> I just oh god, I love them. Oh, yeah, boys. Oh, boys. Uh, yeah. So yeah, there's that. Oh, I forgot to mention something in episode one and episode three, which we're coming up to anyway. Uncle Rick's cameos. Yes. Yeah. Wait, where, where is he in episode three? Oh, you haven't seen him in episode three. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll tell you this. All right. First off, yeah. Oh, so now, since I've seen him in two episodes and not one, every episode has just turned into a game of Where's Wally with Uncle Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? Oh, there he is! Like, in the first episode, he's obviously in the principal's office. Yeah. Uh, he's, like, doing that. Um, sorry, it sounds, it sounds very weird for me to say principal. I, my head is, like, headmaster. Uh, <laughs> in episode three... Uh, he had a 3D model of himself printed out, and he's one of the statues. Oh, okay. In, nice. In, uh, Medusa's lair. Yeah. In Auntie M's garden, Norman Porium. He is. He is yeah. In. Uh, 
uh, I, I I didn't notice the first time and I was rewatching it and uh, someone actually told me to look out for it and I was since I was looking for it I found it and I was like oh there he is there's Uncle Rick nice he's only Uncle Rick in the beginning episodes for you he's gonna be Rick the Dick in the later as yeah. soon as he starts causing pain he goes from Uncle Rick to Rick the Dick yeah he gets relegated from the family league yeah until he makes up for his mistakes yeah absolutely um. I can't wait. Sorry, I had to grab Athena, Cat Athena. She's she's yeah. a so, yeah. For, for, for the attacking. people at home, it's if you hear us just randomly shouting at stuff. Sophie has two cats called Athena and Hades, and Susie has two cats called Apollo and Artemis. We're getting a pantheon together. I do have two other cats, but they're not mentioned in this podcast because I'm sorry, but. The gays aren't the gays aren't among the gods. I mean, there are many gays among the gods, but not these two. Yeah. You know, Amity and Adara are two different subsets of gays from other other cartoons. <laughs> and that concludes the first episode of Feline Opinionated. We are sorry for the very fast cutoff. We are filming this on Skype. We get interrupted a lot between our boring adult life and jobs. And so we just have to edit it together. We have no professional tools or anything. We're just doing the best we can with what we have. So, uh, yeah, those are our thoughts on episodes one and two. We hope that you'll please put some of your own thoughts in the comments if you uh, if you want to. And we will try and address those. Uh, and mostly this is just for a bit of fun. So, yeah, stay opinionated, everyone. All right. Bye.